Okay, big D, it's Sunday, baby. Woo! And I was in the gym this morning, and I said, what the heck are we going to cover today? So what the heck are we going to cover? <laughs> Just kidding. So this little bench or stool was something I was practicing because with some of the uh, joinery, the through tenon joinery, about a year ago, and um, it just ended up being a stool in the gym. Um, I want to eventually do or build uh, a Welsh stick chair. Okay. So I was, you know, doing some of these octagonal uh, legs and with a taper. And uh, I did this inlay right here. This is called a sedge bell. It's from Slab Stitcher. And I said, you know what? When Big D and Chris are here today, I'm going to show them how to do this because this is a wicked cool system for doing inlay. And uh, this is called the sedge bell. Wow. Yes, yeah, so it's pretty, it's beautiful and flush too. Gosh. And it's, it's like you know what you're doing. And it's wicked easy. Uh, there's no chisel work with a sedge bell. But uh, let's uh, break out the slab stitcher and go for it. Let's go for it. Cool. We're going to be using this kit that I bought about a year ago. Uh, it's called Slab Stitcher. And the reason I really like it is because not only does it allow you to like do the bow ties, but they, you gotta go to their website and see all the really cool inlays that they offer. Mm -hmm. And it's just not you cutting it. Slab Stitcher actually has the different species of woods, but they also have copper, they got aluminum for all kinds of inlays. And when I was in Vegas, I was talking to uh, the couple, I believe Dwayne and Jen, and I met them and I said, you know what, I'm into lifting weights. And they said, oh my God, we're gonna do a barbell. Well, lo and behold, <laughs> <laughs> they made this one and they call it the sedge bell. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to do that inlay yeah. that I did and teach you a few things. So I always tell people if you're going to get this, get the kit, okay, because right here's your master template and the only thing you got to do is once that's in, you just plug that in. It's a plug and play system. I always go like this because I know we're going to use this one. You, of course, this is loose because they send you a template guide with it. We're going to use the 1400 on here. I think that'll be the right router. Okay, we'll, we'll just do this a little bit lower. Okay. That self centers in the OF 1400. Okay, but they also give you a sentry mandrel, the bit, everything soup to nuts and you can order all the different species of woods that you want to inlay. And you can get different sizes. You can build the kits the way you want it. They got bow ties. You could do custom ones. They got all the states. Uh, say we want to do one from Indiana, we can. And they, they're really a great couple that allow you to, you know, do custom stuff too as well. That's awesome. Yep. And then basically just like just clamp this down and yep. get everything set up and go to town. And we'll go and we're going to start setting it up. And All I'll right. show you how to set depth and everything with it. Let's go. Do it. Before I do the final shaping of this, I'm going to, this is way too thick here. So I'm going to just shape it down with a draw knife. Okay. But I want to start right now and let's position where we want this uh, inlay. Now, is there any with these, do you have any particular with the grain or anything? No, nope, not going to go for it. Not necessarily. Well, let me explain. A key like this usually goes across the grain or at an angle because if I have a major split in here, you don't want it to continue to split. So you okay. would always put this like this. And because you have an anchor here, okay, it would keep it from continuous splitting. But you know what? This is more decorative. So what do you think? Right there in the center like that? Looks good to me. Okay, yeah. so what I like to do is I like to do a quick outline on this just so we know how to set up my template. Okay. Okay, and I'm just going to trace it just so we, we see it. It doesn't have to be perfect for me, but there it is. I like it. That looks pretty perfect And now to me. what that allows us to do is start to work with this so we know how to clamp this on like this. Cool. Cool. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a few clamps and we're going to set the clamps in here. That way there we know how to, and we'll take our router and we'll see if we can clear the clamps. 
Cool. Sounds good. So one of the things I want to show you today or teach you is pretty simple. And this is going to go through everything we build going forward or everything we're doing. Okay. Remember uh, last week's video when we did the, the bench restoration? I said, make sure you put this and we moved it around so it's in a comfortable position. Right. I want you to think about this. Before we get clamping the master template on or anything like that and doing all our setup, think about using a router just like this. Okay. This is awkward. So if something feels awkward, it's just, it, it can, I don't want to say it's simple, but I just, we just created this platform right here. This is a lot more comfortable, right? Right. So we're going to do our routing here and this is where we'll start setting everything up. Okay. So Sounds make good. sure you're comfortable. And if you're not, then get comfortable in what you're doing. Fix it. Fix it. <laughs> so what we, what we did was we traced out the sedge bell on there. Yep. We knew where we wanted it. We took the, the, the regular template, we put it on there, and we took the master template, okay? We positioned it, we got it close enough for government work. Now what we wanna do is we wanna put on a couple of clamps, okay? But we also want to be aware when we're running this, we don't wanna get in the way of the clamps. So okay. I, I chose these clamps for a reason. It's because you don't necessarily have to clamp it up here. You can reach underneath. You just don't want it to impede the movement. As we do this, we want to, that one's good. We, and we just want to position that just exactly where we want it. So I think I would put the other one on there, Big D. Okay, right here. Just like that, bring it in. And then we'll check the movement of the router. Okay, before we start setting bits and depths and stuff like that. So let's just see, are we gonna be able to get in there? Uh, nope. That one's good, this one isn't. Okay. So I gotta reposition this one and just pretend you're going, uh, I'm going around. So look, I'm not gonna come into or hit the base with that clamp, I'm gonna come around and now it's gonna be really easy. Awesome. You know what? Believe it or not, we're halfway there. Okay, so now we're going to set up the router bit into the router. Awesome. Okay, so this is a quarter inch diameter bit, but it's also a quarter inch shank. Okay, I installed the quarter inch collet. I'm going to put it in and I'm going to hand tighten it. Always make sure you're careful so you don't cut yourself. Okay, now the beauty of this router is it's got this ratcheting collet. So I'm going to let you do this and you're going to put the, the bit or the wrench on the collet, and you're gonna press that button. Okay? And there you go, use the, the handle as leverage. And you don't have to take it off, but you got it pretty good. Good, you just wanna make sure it's tight enough so you don't have bit slippage, it doesn't fall out on you. Good, good job, hey, wait a minute. Is that the first time you put a router bit in a router? <laughs> yes, it is. He's lying. He did, there was two takes before, but we're okay with that. <laughs> he believed that it was my first time. <laughs> this is a template guide adapter. Okay. It goes into these two little tenons, snap into there. All right. Okay, so the bit that we use with the sedge belt is a quarter inch. Okay, and Slab Stitcher supplies this template uh, template okay with the lock nut so with this adapter which is really nice there's no play in here so that fits really snug oh, okay so when you put this on they give you slab stitcher they give you one of these this is called a centering mandrel with this router system you don't need it okay okay because when I place this into these two mortises and lock it in it's already self scented that's awesome. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to go. Cool. Now we got to set depth, and we're going to do that right over here okay. on the table. Sounds great. So we're getting this in there. We just got to make oh. sure this lines up in here. Okay, so what happens is this is a template guide. Okay, this is your template. Okay. This outside here is going to run along here and cut the inlay. Okay. That this is going to fit in. So that's what that little bit... Chris, get up here so you can see it. That little offset is what you're seeing in there. Oh, okay. Okay, so that router bit will cut a perfect mirror image of this. So let's go ahead and set it up in there. And what we gotta do now is, I could, we could measure how thick this is, but you, you, you don't need to know. Okay. It's all built into the router, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bit, you're gonna see it go right, I'm gonna do that right down. Ooh, let's get this out of the way. Okay, good. That's out of the way. We're gonna set it right here. We're gonna take that bit. 
And that bit is actually hitting this. I call it ground zero. Okay. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna release the depth stop rod so it sits right there on that bottom turret. Okay. Okay, now I'm also gonna do this because this is the beauty of micro adjust. Okay, you see this right here? See where zero lines up? I'm going to take this um, inlay and I'm going to pick this up and set it in just like this, okay? And press down, and then I'm gonna lock it in, okay? So what I've done is now where this is sitting, which I call ground zero, okay. there's space in here to inlay this into here. But here's where I've always done this when I've done inlay, okay? I want to make it just a hair proud Okay. Okay. So what I want to do is if we look at this scale, come here so you can see this D. See where it says zero? If I go descending in scale, and there's a way to test this, okay? Nine, eight, seven. Each one of those is a tenth of a millimeter. I've created, it's pushed this rod down so there's less space. And you can always tell, look, see how that barely fits in there? Okay. Okay. So that'll make it a little bit proud. Oh, okay. Okay. Now if I go back to zero, watch. Now it's, look, it's perfect fit, right? Oh wow. If I ever had to go deeper, I would go one, two, three, up in the scale, and you can actually see the extra space in there now. Yeah, you can. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it down to zero, and I'm gonna take it three-tenths of a millimeter, and then what'll happen is this, once the glue's in there, it'll stand just a little bit proud and we'll sand it perfectly flush. Oh, perfect. Okay, so. There we go. We'll just release this <coughs> and we're pretty much ready to go. Awesome. Okay, so one of the things I'm gonna show you now is hooking up the dust extraction. The system's fantastic for it. You're gonna see two little tenons in here and here's this two little mortises. So I'm just gonna put those in just like that. This little tab here locks it in and I'm gonna close the window. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the plug-it cord. Now I wanna talk a little bit about router safety with you. Okay. I'm gonna have you put the plug-it cord in, okay? Because this is a small diameter bit, we're just gonna run it at six, full speed, okay? okay? But before you put a cord in, you always make sure it's cycled off. Go ahead and put the plug-it cord in. Make sure it's a full quarter turn. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, D, is I'm gonna let you get the, I'm gonna get the gist of it and show you how to work this. Okay. Okay, it's a feel because you really can't see anything because that template guide is blocking it, but it doesn't matter. And then we'll look at it. I'm gonna do a little bit and then I'll have you do a little. Awesome. That's All good. right, let's do it. So one of the things I'm gonna show you is, it, this is more of a feel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure before I start it, that one of the walls of that template guide is up against the template. I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna plunge down and I'm just gonna start cutting as I feel this, okay? Then I'm gonna come back because I want B to do some. And then I'm just gonna go around. And I'm gonna clean out the middle of that bell. And we can come back and look at it after. But I'm gonna stop because <clears throat> I want D to come in here. Always remember, let it come down from speed. We'll lift it up, okay? And we'll look in to see what happened. Okay, see how I'm starting to clean that out? Oh, wow. Okay, so what I'm gonna have you do, D, is I'm gonna have you come in here. Okay. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start it up. Push that to lock it on, good. Now, plunge, plunge down, and you're gonna lock the knob, good. And you're gonna feel it and you're gonna follow. There you go, you'll get it. Good, can you feel how it's going around yeah, there? Yeah. Good. Then you're going to come back and now you're going to hit that bar. Okay, so I want you to go around the entire perimeter. Okay, good. Now you're going to start cleaning up in the middle. How does that feel? Good? Okay, go all the way down. Now do that top bell again. You still get a little bit in there. Okay, now release the plunge. Bring it up. Turn it off. Do not move it. Always, always let that router come down from speed. It's okay. It's really fast. Oh, huh? about 22,000 RPM. Go ahead and pull it off. <laughs> okay. Almost. Chris, come in here to see this. 
you can only feel or you can only see so much. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it up and of course it's right in the middle part. See that little chip's in there like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just do one more. We're gonna start it right here and we're just gonna go back and forth back and in forth. there. Okay. okay. <laughs> yep, there you go. Hot dog. Dag on it. Look how perfect that is. All right. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take the, the template out. But I'm gonna to start to feel that. Oh, dad gone, look at that. This is gonna be a perfect fit. Now the one thing you gotta do with this is don't push it all the way in right now. No. <laughs> because guess what? That's a good fit. Dwayne and Jen make these absolutely perfect at slab stitcher. So that's and you know what? You know what's really cool? Is I can't wait because they're starting to make aluminums and uh, versions of these. Nice. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take this off now. Now that we know the fit's right, okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> cool. Look at that. Okay. So what we're gonna do is now we're just gonna put some glue in there and tap it in. Okay. So one of the things I want to show you and teach you is we're gonna um, glue this in right now. Okay. Okay. So this is a very simple glue up or glue in, but. I want to I want to point something out so you get into this habit, okay? okay. <clears throat> when I go into a glue up, I always remember a few things: chasing clamps. Oh, I know we're going to do two clamps on this. We've already stepped through our process of clamping. You guys are going to see how this is done, but make sure you have your clamps and they're ready to go. Make sure you have okay. enough of them ready to go. We only need two for this operation, but we're also going to use a clamping call. Okay, so we have the right pressure down on this. Okay. Make sure you have a brush, make sure you have rags. If it's a big glue up and you know there's gonna be a ton of squeeze out, make sure you have a little bit of water. Okay, so you can clean it up but not overly. And I always use something like this and you'll see what I'm talking about here. See this? I always squeeze a little glue here. We're gonna put some in here. Okay, and I'm just gonna use this. I use a variety of things to coat surfaces. One of the best things you'll see when we're doing uh, doors later on is uh, I use old uh, hotel cards. They're great, I cut them up and they make great glue spreaders, you'll see that. But I wanna make sure wherever I'm gonna get the long grain to long grain adhesion, <clears throat> I make sure, and this sometimes I'll just spread this out and just gop it on there really quick. You know what another great glue spreader is? Is your finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but coat all surfaces that you know you're gonna get some glue line on. Okay. okay, you don't have to kill it with a ton of glue. Just enough. Yep, but you know what? And there's a reason I use this particular tight bond is because it has a really long open time. In other words, there's a difference between open time, tack time, and, oh, you know what I didn't get? I need a, a dead blow hammer. So let's just grab a quick hammer right here. But I'm just gonna start to tap that in. And you feel there's a little ledge there, okay? That's and that's punch that. Exactly. Exactly. You got it? Yep. So what we want to do is now I'm gonna wipe this clean. Okay, and then we're gonna clamp it now. Okay. This sometimes, and I don't think we're gonna run into this, but this sometimes I'll put a piece of wax paper. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna throw that across there like that. See that, huh? It's included in the kit. It's included in the kit. Look at that. I'm just gonna put that right across like that. And then I'm gonna take this clamp. Okay. And you remember the tips and tricks I taught you with Bessie? Yep. Click it like this to engage it. And now let's get that, because that's right over the bell. Just bring that, there you go. There you go, and tighten it up. Now, you don't have to over crank it because I know that that's gonna come in and sit perfectly just nice. a hair above, okay? Boom. And that's the glue up. We weren't scrambling. You know what? No matter how much you prepare, you're always gonna forget something. Well, not always. The more you do it, the more you'll have things prepared. Okay, so <laughs> the glue has dried. And what we're gonna do, Big D, is go ahead and take the clamps off. Okay. Okay, remember that? A uh, piece of uh, wax paper, we just took that white side thing, mm -hmm. and you're gonna see 
over here, look, check this out. See that sedge bell? Remember I told you it'd be a little bit proud? Feel that. Yeah, feel it. So now it's not staying way proud, but just a hair. So what we're gonna do is just take a Rotex and sand that flush. We just did, and we you inlaid this sedge bell from Slab Stitcher. Okay, what we're gonna do is, you remember I told you how we set that micro adjust on the 1400 yep. or the plunge router? Uh, there's still a slight hair here. What we gotta do is we gotta level this. Now, I want you to grab the, the sand and put it up there. How comfortable is that? Not comfortable at all. Remember what I've been saying this whole time. You want to, you, A, we have to clamp it so this thing doesn't go flying around as we're saying. It's a small little area, right? Surface area. But you want to do it at the height that's comfortable for you. So, one of the most used clamps in this shop, okay, is this. This is our vacuum clamp. Right now, I changed the pot out to match this underside right here, okay? So what we want to do is put it on there. And now see how that's locked in? Now we can sand it. A lot of people being in cabinetry, woodworking, they're looking at this. What do we get accomplished? You have to always ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish when I'm sanding? Okay, we have to level this field to this field. Okay, so if you put like, and we'll be building some stuff where we do glued up panels. Okay, that's leveling, you wanna level those panels. Now, what if you're just, uh, you, you built a cabinet and you wanna remove the, uh, the marks, okay, the, uh, the pencil marks. Are you gonna start with a low grit? No, you're gonna start with 120 grit. So you always gotta ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish when I'm sanding? I would automatically start this with 40 grit. Oh, wow. And that's how we're going to start it, okay. okay, with 40 grit. I'll sand a little and then what we'll do is we'll level this, see this? We'll level it with the 40 grit and then the only thing we got to remember, because somebody will say, oh my god, that's such a rough finish. Of course, you know, but you're not trying to level anymore, you're just removing with the 60 grit those little marks okay. or those little swirl patterns or those little grit patterns and by the way, if you start with 40, this is gonna be so quick, it's ridiculous. The 60 is gonna be even faster. I mean, and then 80. So when, if I started with 80, I'll be finished in half the time if I start with 40. You see these outside holes? Yep. Find one, find two, lay it down. See how it automatically lines up? Always pick the two holes. Okay. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> okay. So look, as I stand, and hopefully you can hear it over my mic. But as I stand, I go back and forth, to and fro, okay? And then six to eight inch circles. And I'm going over the entire board. Okay, and when I turn off a sander like this, I am, and see, feel this, this is almost level. I'm going to oh, sand wow. it to get rid of those marks, okay? Okay. But as I do this, and I don't think we'll be able to see it, but we get a we get the 40 grit scratch pattern, okay? But you're going to see across the entire top of this stool, it's even. Okay, good. You take it off, turn it off. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to switch to 60 grit. We have an even scratch pattern, okay? <laughs> and through time, <laughs> through time, you'll see that. You'll, you'll, you'll feel it, you'll see it, you go, okay, right. look, that's, that's perfect. That's where I want to be. I have no undulations, okay? Ooh, good word. But, ooh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting better. <laughs> okay. Here's the other thing I'm going to show you. Are we breathing? Do you see any stuff floating around? No. Okay, we're not breathing it. That's why dust extraction is a must at the source. The other thing, look at this, bit, look at this 40 grit. It's clean. Ooh, so There's clean. nothing stuck to it, right? Yeah. So guess what? We can take that off now and we can reuse it. We'll put that back in the 40 grit because that's still cutting like a son of a gun, but now we're going to put 40 grit on there. 60? Oh, thank you, Dee. Good job. <laughs> all back and forth through the whole thing. There you go. Woo. Yep. Now, can I ask you a question? Shoot. 
So, if, when I was going this way, is it better to go with the rotation of the sander? I feel like sometimes I was trying to go against it and it was... I like going against the rotation. This is my personal preference because okay. I feel like I'm cutting better. Okay. Okay? And the rotation is always marked. Well, majority of the sanders on a sander. This is as it. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If we had started with 80, we'd still be sanding this. Wow. Flush. Now, this is, we, I just want to show this. We're going to stop at 80, but normally I would sand 120 and then 150 if I was going into one fini uh, to finishing, and that's all I do. But let's just hit it with an 80, see where we're at, okay. so we can uh, wrap this up. Traditionally, you want to sand like this. Okay. What I tell everybody, grab it here and get close. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're on top of it, and it's back and forth at a steady rate, like this. Okay, to and fro. But you see how I'm in close proximity? I'm not out here. I'm in here. And then six to eight inch circles. And you've already learned one of the top reasons people get swirl marks. Okay, you already know to take the sand up off of the board that you're sanding. And oh. feel that. Look at that. Feel that. You're at 80 grit. I'd say that. <laughs> nice, Chris. Chris. Chris just had to feel it. Okay. The other thing I want to show you is you never leave a sander sitting like that. Okay. You always take it and you put it on its side so the, the pad or like that so the pad. You don't want to create a flat on the pad. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just a quick rule of thumb of sanding. You did an exceptional job. Let's wrap this up. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> any questions on this big D? Uh, no, it seemed pretty easy once we kind of, since we had the guides and everything, it made it real easy. So, it never used to be this easy. <laughs> uh, I've actually done these uh, in uh, some conference tables by hand. I've routed them. I've eyeballed it. Okay, I started with the key and traced it out. Okay, and then hand chiseled it in. Oh wow. This system, the way Dwayne and Jen have put it together, look at this, and we panned on it earlier. I mean, I just have a couple of templates. Okay, I have the sedge bells and the dovetails. This is extensive system. They have different species. Uh, look, the sedge bells are available in aluminum now. Uh, we did this one, this is maple. They're so, it's such an extensive, you could do customs, they'll do customs for you. So I just wanted to call them out at Slab Stitcher because they've done a great job with this system. Oh yeah. And you did your first inlay and you did a spectacular job. So, like we always wrap this up and it's our saying, be positive and stay sharp.